welcome back to the Dear and Medical series. This is your girl Nikki and this is Amar. And today we have a very important video for you guys today. It's how to pay your way through university. We know those tuitions are expensive. Not everybody come from a high economic status or a background. So we are giving you this video to just to show you guys the different ways on how to go through university. It can be debt free, but you can also take loans. Either way is fine. As long as you get to university, you go get that degree and you pay them afterwards. So we're just going to start with our first point that Damar is going to tell us. What's the first way or the first point you think should we should talk about today? Okay, alright. So I think um, the first person that you should ask or the first set of people that you should ask is basically your family members. So they want to um, going up next school debt free, your family can help you. have a little auntie overseas, or you have a little cousin here and collect the money um, from them. But if, in fact, your family cannot um, afford or cannot help you pay all of your tuition, of course, there are opportunities out there, which we're going to discuss, but first, you need to just ask your family. Right. So and just see how much you can get what your tuition before. Right, before going to other means. And to jump on that point, to jump on that point about family member, if you are a family member, you're sitting abroad, well not sitting, you're working abroad, and you know you have a little cousin at the university, give them some, you know? Send one cent up, send one hundred dollars, come give them monthly and say, yes, this is for lunch or this is to pay your fare, or this is just miscellaneous, use this to buy a lab coat. Guys, Remember yeah, guys, family members, we need it. Please, we're asking. You see, after we finish university, we won't even bother you guys anymore, you know. So this is just a short aspect in our life when we just want the help. And some of the time, we're just afraid for bed. Because me know my shame tree, the up here so. So me not like shame, you know. So me I go beg and say, Auntie, me I beg I want on. Me not no money. She me said, Jesus, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm like that. I don't like to beg. So please, family members, take the initiative and just donate to us. We want it. I hope my auntie does please. We want it. <laughs> and another point to make is that uh, regardless of how small it is, it right. is very much appreciated because like every little make a mocker as the Jamaican proverb said. So right. the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. If it's even a little forty dollars, we can use that to, to buy a little lunch one week or something. We now go say, I decided when him say, well, some people would say that, but men are still like, I want the forty dollars. I want it. So the next point, <laughs> the next important point, um, I think we should jump to is like our MPs, like the people in our community, like those high, not just the MP only like those governmental persons people who you know that donate and help students to go through school you can just go through them and go and ask them yes counselors you can write a letter if their policies you have to write a letter tell them about your financial need that's also very very important we know how expensive these tuitions are so we are imploring you guys to take all the necessary options you can take to like go through university do not sit at home because you don't have it try to exhaust all options before so it's not just writing the letter and just dropping dropping it off so many the times you just have to put on your brave face go down to the ministry's office go down to the mp's office or the council's office or the big person in your community and say sir or ma'am i'm asking you for help and trust me, I'll give back when I'm done. Because you know, people are going to give you and you should help somebody when you're finished. You know, help one. Just send back the elevator down when you're finished with it. So yeah, just tell them that you really need this. And when they see like, especially young students or young people going through university, they're, they're like, I want to help the student because there's potential in them. So let them see your potential by going down there to speak for yourself. So yeah, that's the thing I need to do too. Yeah, and even if they give you the miscellaneous fee, I know sometimes right. the government give you an amount. Not may not be large, but at least it can be something. Right. Miscellaneous or or tuition or more if, if you so desire or even 
Right. So the thing is, it's not just to go debt free, go through uni university debt free. It's just you can just take him the exhaust in all help you can get. Cause you don't know what that little help might do for you. So nobody ever say a ten thousand dollar loan him give me. Some person don't get any, and you got. You understand? Right. So the MP, we just talk about the, the family members, the MPs, what are the councillors, what's the next one, Lamar? Alright, so I think the ministries, um, a lot of people don't know, but uh, if you do know, the ministry give help. There are bursaries, there are scholarships that are available. There is the Jambat program that is offered by the Ministry of Education, and there are also different scholarships by Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Education. You can go on the Ministry of Finance um, website, which we have a link in the description, and then you can just look at what scholarship you qualify for and the requirements, and then you send in your application. But please remember, it's a ministry, it's, it's a big place, so you need to follow up to ensure that they get all your application. And yeah, just make use of the ministries, especially the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Finance. There are a lot of opportunities and scholarships. You just need to explore it and apply, apply, apply. Right. And just to add on what he said about scholarship, some of the times you think you're not qualified for a scholarship, but I still implore you that there is no harm in still applying. If they say, okay, your GPA needs to be 3.6 or over to apply, what if my little GPA want to go 3.5 and then somebody where a 3.6 never apply? I owe them to give me. Exactly. So the thing about it, you uh, try to exhaust all options, every scholarship you can think of, apply for them. You might never know, one year down the line, you never get to get a call, you hear the money is going to be transferred to your student account because, you know, they did they have money rolling over because not many persons applied. Apply, apply, apply. And then, um, just to add is that if you apply this year and you don't get it, right, don't be discouraged and you can always apply a second time. Because I remember there was this scholarship that I applied for like four times. <laughs> and like it was on the fourth time that I really got the scholarship. So keep on applying for them. Um, you may never know what will happen and don't get discouraged in, in case that like, your GPA is not like this or your GPA not like that. As Nikki said, apply and see how it goes. But well, ensure that same with the lottery, they don't have a ticket, they don't have a chance, if they don't have an application, they don't need to process. Amen. Uh, so, amen. Let like the church say yeah. amen. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And another thing, another place where you can get those scholarships is you, the university that you're going to. Because the U, especially if you're going to UWE, we have a UWE bursary that offer a whole list of scholarships. So you can go, go on the website UWE bursary scholarships and you see all that applies to the different faculty. We'll probably drop it in the comment, in the description box so you guys can see. So if you're a science student, there's an aspect for science and technology. There's an aspect for social sciences. There's an aspect for humanities. So just go there and apply for what applies to you. Do not just say, me now go get it. So me now but I apply. Apply, apply, and sometimes apply. It, and sometimes it's good to look around because I remember when I was searching for scholarship, like just going on Google and just writing scholarship in Jamaica. Um, not just wait on, you know, if I see an ad or somebody telling me about the scholarship, but sometimes you need to take initiative as well. And probably like do the scholarships and just apply for them because there are a lot out there but not all of them are broadcast and are popular you need to find those little ones that probably people don't know about and your chance of getting them will increase right right and if you're a friend and you hear a scholarship going around you probably see it on social media you know your friend this might apply to your friend send the link to them and say we're going to apply for this you might never know what might come up for them so don't, don't just ignore it send it to them you know so yeah the scholarship are very important and the next one the last one we want to discuss on our list are loans so guys some people like see student loans and be like me no one borrow no student loan because me can't go down pay for the rest of my life listen to me listen to me children 
and they're probably older than me. Listen to me, listen to me, guys. There's no such thing as student loan being an abomination. Student loan helps so many different, like, I, would, I don't even want to quote statistics, but I'm saying over 50% of students who go to university are on student loans. So don't tell yourself that because me not go down pay them for no, and me can't go down them and go put up my face in a newspaper. Take one good picture, but <laughs> listen, to, listen to me. Do not tell yourself that you're not taking student loan. I understand that you, you might not have the guarantors or the things that they want, like people to give you references. You might not have that. But try to source those from before. So don't tell yourself, say, you're not going to university because you're not taking the student loan. Student loan is a big, big help. Even if your parents don't have it, and you make, you make your application, student loan is not refusing you. The only way they refuse you is like something really bad, like you literally don't have anybody to sign for you. That's how they re, they they um refuse you. But the average person who apply for a student loan gets a student loan, and they go through school. You see, when you finish and you start work, you gotta pay back your student loan. If you take your one hundred years to pay it, if you want to pay it back in three years, it's all up to you and your work. Do not tell yourself that you don't want loans. Hello, the average student is on loans. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, the important fact, I understand like where you have reservation when it comes to taking out loan because like it's scary you know, you're going to pay about the interest rate and things like that. That's why I would say that tax a loan, right? Apply for a student loan. If nothing else comes up and you ask a family member, you ask this person and then you know, there is nothing else then. Would you not rather like go up after your goals and say, okay, then at least my school fees pay, other than sitting around for probably six years, seven years to come up with a tuition knowing where it is coming from, and then you waste all that time when you could have maybe take the loan and at least you're working and you can pay it back, not on your own time, but <laughs> you know, you can still be working and earning money while. You'll be sitting, not earning any money, not having your degree, and just keep waiting for the money that may never come. Okay? Sometimes you need to push yourself and just think about the logics of the situation. I'm not forcing anybody to take any loan, but I'm saying that you know, just consider uh, the pros and cons, and then you make a final decision. Right. But there is loans available. Right. I know, yeah, I, right. me as a person, I'd force you to take the loan. Me, I'd force you. I said, go and take that loan. Your parents is not going to find two million dollars to pay a tuition. Where are they going to get it? They don't have it. Just like how you don't have it for your parents to get it. Go take the loan and go to school and go work and give back the people them their money. <laughs> well, yes. So, so, so that that just sums up everything that we're talking. The different tips we have about loan, about paying your tuition. So, I, I want to ask you personally, Damar, how do you pay for medical school? All right, so medical school, right, um, there are a lot of options, right, as it regards to sponsorship. I know that the fee is scary, and a lot of people would get um, the full fee offer, and I know it's very discouraging. What, not to cut you, but what, we don't know what the full fee offer is. Right, so the full fee offer would be like $4 million a year. Um, there, for medical students, especially there is a bursary. So it's not automatic that you get the bursary and that's a misconception. And you have to apply just as everybody else and they will grant you the bursary or they won't grant you depending on um, the sponsorship that year. And um, if you get the bursary, it will be 1.8 million a year. Subject to change, right. Are subject to change based on because it's quoted in the US if you're a full fee um, paying student, so right, the figure is always going to change based on what the US dollar is. Um, other than the bursary, there are many different scholarships, additional scholarships for medical students. As Nikki said, um, if you're a full fee person, though, you won't qualify for the US scholarship, so you have to be a sponsored student. So when you're a full fee paying person, you have to go outside to seek other scholarship. Now, as we said for the general population, the Ministry of Education has special scholarship for medical students. 
So you can always explore that. We have our banks, um, which offer to help medical students. The thing is, the Scotia Bank may offer a medical loan, or um, what's the one on campus? The credit, the credit union. union. The credit union. Right. Yeah, the credit union can offer a loan. But basically, how I pay my tuition is mostly by scholarships, right? So I apply, apply, try to keep my grade up and over the qualifications so that we can boost my chance. And I just apply for all the scholarships I can. And with family help, as if you say, they call it anti vampire and they the money. I think that person has the money and stuff like that. So that's basically how I cover my career the scholarships. But your heart not a little loan or nothing, no? It's a debt free. I'm hoping it's. <laughs> Well, basically, well, for me, it's basically the same thing, but it's mostly of a family contribution. As we said, the, the medical school fee is super expensive. As we said, that you're paying up to $4 million annually for a non-sponsored pro for the non-sponsored program and for the sponsored program you pay up to 670 with miscellaneous and so 670k to 4 million is a big big jump so it's super expensive for me as i said it's mostly family contribution i have to call them and say boy you know say school fee ready this dumb for me now <laughs> but yeah um i have a strong family Daddy. What's that? No sugar daddy. No, no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> my mother is my sugar daddy. <laughs> so yes, as I said before, my my I have a very strong uh, family background. Not really background, but I would say a strong family support. So we try. Oh yes, how I pay it personally is I sign up for the payment plan plans annually. So the payment plans you pay a quarter of the, the, the tuition uh, semester's tuition. Say if my tuition, say for instance, say for instance, my tuition is a million dollars, and so per semester I'll pay five hundred. So for the payment plan, I'd have to pay a quarter of the five hundred to be eligible to go on the payment plan. So I try to back up the quarter. My family and I try to back up the quarter. We pay that, and then we pay the remaining in the different months. So September, then we pay October, then we pay November so I can do exams in December. So personally for me, we jump on the payment plans. I think you guys can check that out if you don't have the big money at once. And my family has always been there for me and helping me. Hopefully, I can continue. But I'm, and there's... Just, mm -hmm. just, I'm sorry, just to add, Mickey has a video on the payment plan and how it works. So yeah, you can check out that video for more information as well. Right, right. So I have a very, yes, a tutorial. We can probably drop it up here to show you guys how to apply for the payment plan. And guys, listen to me. There's no shame in the game. You go through university. That's what you want. Go through university. Then you can pay all those loans when you're working. You're not going to sit and say, I'm not taking a loan. So let me just sit and wait until I'm 35. I'm working until I'm 35 to get the amount of money I can get to pay for my tuition. You might never know what might happen. Some emergency might come up. You fall in an accident. You have to take that money you were saving to look about yourself. So go and take those loans. Go on that payment plan. Go and ask those family members and go through university. No shame in the game. And just to add though, um, sometimes you just need to start and have the push to start because I've realized that once you start and then you, you know that you know you want to finish, you give you that extra push and you'll be surprised how things work out. Trust me, things will work out. Right. If you push and you, have to, and you put out the work, things will, things will fall. Yes. Right. So the most important thing is to get that push to start. Mm -hmm. And even if you start, and you're in it and you can't do it, there's nothing wrong with taking a gap year. Take a gap year, try to gather some money, try to gather some loans, take the gap year and come back. Just don't stop. Just don't give up. That's the, that's the major takeaway here. Don't stop. Don't give up. You understand? Yeah. I think that's all my advice for today. <laughs> yeah, so I hope this was beneficial to you guys. It is scholarship seasons. 
hope you are applying for the scholarships. Remember, there's a jump back program. You can also apply for that as well, right? And just any opportunity that you see, just jump on it. Right. Right. And, right. and as you mentioned about the jump back program, I was personally a part of the jump back program. I forgot to talk about that in mind. So you have to do like yeah. two two hundred hours voluntary hours to get uh they pay a quarter of your school fee i was a part of that as well so i tried to exhaust all my options my family the jam back in the scholarship if i if i'm short like a ten thousand dollars i try to get a loan or something you understand so yes personally i am was a part of the jam back program and i really thank the ministry for that so yeah that's it for today's video on how to go to uh, university debt free or with a loan so we hope you take these tips and just start as we said and don't give up so thank you for watching until next time see you soon bye, bye.